Hello everybody, good morning. This is Cheryl uh, coming to you from Florida. For all of you who are my subscribers visiting today, welcome back. And for anybody that's new, welcome. I'm glad to have you. If you would leave me a comment, I would surely appreciate it. It gets me to get to know you better. And that's what I'm all about. I hope that you find today's video inspirational and um, that you enjoy it. I am currently working on a design team project for Line Dot Arrow. The kit that I'm using is called Spring Writings. And this kit is going to be a little bit challenge for me, out of the box type challenge because I am going to attempt on doing primarily the entire thing in a sepia tone. The great thing about this kit of Natalie's from Line Dot Arrow is that this kit comes both in sepia and color. So it's really a versatile kit and I've printed obviously, as you can see, the sepia, but I've also printed some parts of the color um, elements because I may use some of those as well. Uh, but the, uh, the journal itself that I'll be creating will primarily be uh, a sepia-toned um, journal. So, I thought that I would start by showing you the sepia parts that I have um, printed so far. And also, at the end, I would like to show you something that I decided to create with um, my first, the first thing that I'll be creating. So, Without further ado, I am going to continue. I happen to have had a small accident to the left of my desk, and I'm just going to clean that up. It, um, my, I filled my glue bottles this morning and just noticed that the cover to my sugar bottle is, um, was loose and on its side and it had gotten onto my desk. So I'm just taking some hand sanitizer. I don't know if I'm in frame with that, but I'm taking some hand sanitizer because it cleans up everything off of my mat, glue, you name it, inks, everything. And I get it at the Dollar Tree. It's just regular old hand sanitizer. And it is cleaning up my mess perfectly, which is wonderful. So I'm just going to leave that over there to dry. I am going to take some hand sanitizer and wipe my hands. Make sure I have no glue on them while I do this. And the good thing about the hand sanitizer is you don't even need anything to dry your hands. It's got alcohol in it, so it dries it pretty quickly. Except I put a lot on <laughs> make sure I got all that off. So I'm sorry about that. Not a very good way to start a video. I had a few technical problems this weekend. I was going to video and we had to have our dog in for surgery and she had a miserable, miserable weekend. So I was up pretty much with her. She's on an injected, injection of Gubernex every 12 hours, and she's also on gabapentin. So she's 16 years old, and I don't know, sometimes I get a little nervous about her crossing that rainbow bridge, but God knows, and um, she's doing much better today, so that's good. I hope I'm in frame. I think I am. My camera's above me, so... I'll take a peek every once in a while just to make sure. 
have a sip of my delicious chai tea. And here is the kit. It's called Spring Writings. And the kit comes in sepia as well. And this is the sepia part of the kit. And so here are some pockets. Wonder if it's too bright. Let's see. Let me move this over this way. So here are some pockets. Tags. Some more tags. They're very pretty. Very pretty. I love the tone. Here's a collage page. Envelopes and ephemera. Another background page. Another collage page. Gorgeous collage page with a rose. Another rose is over here. Very spring-like. Very pretty. Very, very pretty. And like I said, this will be a challenge because it's sepia. And I love color. I love pastels and things like that. So it shouldn't actually be too hard. But I've been dying to do something um, either in black and white or sepia tone. So... This is going to be fun. I really hope that you join me. It's going to be a series. I'm going to start off with making some ephemera and some embellishments before I start the journal. So this is the first of uh, probably three or four uh, videos that I'll put out this week regarding um, this wonderful kit by Natalie at Line.Arrow. And I'll put the information in the link below so that you will have all of the information in the event that you would like to purchase this kit. And like I said, it is a wonderful kit because you not only get the sepia tones, but you get the color tones as well in the exact same pages. And it's just chock full of pages. <laughs> I mean, it's just, I haven't counted them yet. And these aren't all of them. I haven't even printed all of them. I've just printed what I'm going to be using for now. This one's my favorite. It's a collage. I love collages. It's got a lot of writing. Here you have a lot of pen tips. The bird. The, the two birds on the branches, the flowers, more writing. Um, it looks like some receipts, more writing, looks like part of a postcard, looks like lilacs. Isn't that beautiful? It's just tremendous. I just love it. Natalie, you've done a fabulous job. I just adore it. Here it is again. Now I printed this, as you can tell. I printed this on the same paper, same weight paper. But with this one, I printed um, with just a regular copy paper print color. With this one, I did um, my premium color. And I have an inkjet printer. Um, it's an HP Photo uh 7155 NV photo printer so if you print it for uh with your just your lowest setting it comes out this color which i love and it comes out this color if you print it with your high quality which i love so you'll be seeing different sepia tones And again, here's that collage paper. We're going to be working with this today, actually. Let's set that aside. 
Now, there it is in color. It's the same paper. One is in color and one is in sepia. Isn't that beautiful? And I probably will be using some of the color elements, like I said, in the sepia uh, journal. But, um, like I said, primarily it will be sepia. And then I cut out some of the color elements for you to see. And this is all part of one kit. You don't have to buy several. You just buy one, you get both the sepia and the color. We saw this a little while ago, the London Bridge collage. Only it was um, in the sepia tone. Very spring. Another in the color. And we're back to sepia again. And then in the color. So here are your two pages. If you can notice the difference. Here is the sepia. Here is the color. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous kit. You'll be seeing it on the Facebook website as well. On the Line Dot Arrow, I'll be posting daily on different things that I make. And I hope to get up on possibly two videos a day, depending on how I feel and what's going on with my pub. Here are those tags in color. Another postcard collage, although you could cut the postcards out and make them separate. More pockets. This kit is huge. I did not, like I said, I did not print the whole kit. There are some more words and tickets and tags in the color. I also have printed it in the seat. More pockets. More postcards. And over here we have stamps. And I love how she did the stamps. So I'll show you how we could keep those looking exactly like it is in the picture with the stamp I have. A couple of ideas to do that. So today I am going to be making something similar to this. I happen to be working on a few journals at the same time and I had an accident while I was doing it and I was so happy. So I was printing, 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 printing for two kits well, not kits, because this isn't a kit. This happens to be some freebies that I got. And this is some antique fabric that I um, scanned and uh, printed. But I printed it on vellum, uh, not vellum, tracing paper. And then this is just regular paper, and this is paper here. And we have a pocket here, and as you can see, you can see through the tracing paper. It kind of makes it like vellum. And then just for sturdiness, I put the paper on the front to hold um, my elements that I'll be making for this particular journal. Well, I went to um, print my vellum for today and I forgot that I had something in the printer already with vellum on it to print. And that was pretty exciting because what I was printing were these sweet little bunnies. Well, I had the vellum in there, I mean the uh, tracing paper, and I can show you how to do that if you want to leave a 
comment. I will show you how to print on tracing paper. It's very simple. I'll bring these over here. Anyway, I had it in there to print my um, my image from line.arrow and forgot and printed this again. Now, can you see the difference? This is on the um, photo paper. This is on tracing paper. So I fussy cut it out. And as you can see, they make fabulous stickers. So I was very happy with that. Here's another one. Oops. And another. Now here it is on paper. as you can see, and here it is on the vellum. But as soon as you put it on something to use as a sticker, you can see through it still. Let me get some book page maybe. Um, I'll use this, no. So you can see right through that. So you may see some of these in the, some of the vellum stickers that I came up with, or the uh, tracing paper stickers. So I was very happy with that. Here's the difference in this one and this one. Happy mistake. And like I said, if anybody's interested in knowing how to print on tracing paper, I will be happy to show you that. I've been doing it for years. Here again is one of the uh, tracing paper ones. Um, and that's about it. So today we are going to make one of these pockets using our spring writings kit in the um, sepia tone and I'll try and keep it strictly sepia tone but I can't promise anything <laughs> I may end up cutting some of our colored pieces but that's okay that's why we have two parts to the kit so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go over here to my right and I'm going to find my piece of vellum that I printed. And as you can see, like I said, this was the colored one and the um, uh, sepia. This one is printed on vellum and all you do it's so simple. I hope I didn't leave this on too long. It's been on for all weekend because I haven't been able to video. But all you do is take your Elmer's glue stick, children's, you know, glue stick. Let me see if I can find mine. Right here, your Elmer's glue stick. And like I said, this would have come right off had I taken it right off, but my my dog needed me and and I just left it and, and this is the first opportunity I've had to come back and go over it. So I've never ever left my tracing paper on for this long. But as you can see, no worries, it's still coming right off. It would have just peeled right off had I put it through the printer and just peel, you know, peeled it off right away. But always use a very cheap Elmer's children's glue stick, not a real good glue stick, something that's going to hold down your paper, something, you know, this won't work. It will glue it to the paper and you won't be able to get it off. Even something like, um, I like to use the temporary fixative that I use for quilting. Um, but I didn't think a lot of people would have that. Now, as you can see, because I left it on, I have some paper, but that's not going to be a problem. I'm just going to take my white eraser 
and I'm gonna erase off that paper off of the tracing paper that had, well, actually I'll probably use my fingernail because um, it was on there, like I said, since Saturday morning when I was going to film this. And I know I still have to get back to our um, uh, ephemera holder that we're making, but I really wanted to get a head start on my um, design team project for Natalie as it's due. I'd like to have it finished by the um, no later than the 9th of April. So I'll be working on this every day until then, which will be fun. <laughs> I don't mind it at all. I could work on it all month. It'd be a pretty big journal, but I think I've got it designed so that it's going to be pretty big anyway. I hope you all are well. I hope you're following the collaboration um, with Rach and Bella Crafts. There are so many fabulous ideas. I'm going to try this. I'm going to take a little bit of my yeah it worked I took a little bit of my um yeah that worked really well I took a tiny bit of my hand sanitizer and wiped it on the paper where the glue was and like I said this wouldn't have happened had I taken it right off that day, but like I said, my my sweet doc really needed me. She was in so much pain. So I'll just go over that now. And it's coming right off, no problem with the and it's not doing a thing to the vellum. I mean the tracing paper, the faux vellum. Hope I don't get in trouble by anybody with that, but that's basically what it is. It's just tracing paper. And you can get tracing paper anywhere, craft store, Amazon. I've had tracing paper for years because I use it a lot in my crafting. I've been printing on it since I started junk journaling. I love it. Okay. So that's good enough because we're not going to be using this whole this whole page. And I'm sorry about this little faux pas here of my waiting too long to peel it off my paper. And like I said, if you take your tracing paper and your copy paper and you take your glue stick, very simple. If you take your glue stick, I'm sure a lot of you already know how to do this, but for the sake of the newbies, just do this with your school glue and then place your tracing paper right on it. If you do that, your tracing paper is going to be larger, so you just match up your corners like this of your tracing paper. Flip it over and cut so that it's the same measurement. My printer prints like this, so you wanna make sure that this is down so that when it prints, it will print on the vellum. Once it comes out of the printer, let it dry for a minute if you have a inkjet, just a minute. And as you can see, it peels right off and it's ready for the next piece. You do not have to re-glue. I do this with fabric, all kinds of fabric. Um, I do it with tissue paper and napkins. So don't throw away those white parts of your napkins. They're very handy. So because I tore this little piece here, I am going to just trim that off with my trimmer so that my pocket 
will come out evenly. Oh, this is such a pretty kit. I can't even stand it. And here I've got little bits of paper on it. But my hand sanitizer worked really well. <laughs> so, and like I said, oh, another thing is um, I have been using Spackle, which I will be showing you today. It's a technique. Uh, that I know a lot of you probably already do now, but use modeling paste. I happen to use Spackle. Um, my friend Heather from Ruby and Pearl has taught me so many things. Um, one of the things she taught me that she had learned from her friend Angie was using Spackle in your uh, projects. Um, and I'll be showing you that. And also, I saw it, Yvette um, also has used Spackle. And she gave me a really good tip when I watched her the other day uh, to use the Spackle that is non-shrinking. Now, I've never had a problem with using my Fast Dry Spackle. Um... I don't know which side that's on, but it's okay. It came off whichever side it was on with my handy dandy $1 hand sanitizer. And here we go. I'll just make sure we have no glue or paper and we will start. So yes, Yvette had suggested the non-shrink spackle that you use on your wallboard when you have a hole or nail holes or things like that. So here it is, you can use it any way um, that you would like. So let me just get my trimmer here. And let me just take this because I tore it and make it straight. move my tea before I spill that too and then we have an accident and I'm just gonna have a sip thank you make sure I'm level here push a few of these things back I don't want to take off too much so The tracing paper cuts very nice, as you can see. I hope you can see. You know what? Let me just try and shut off one of these lights. Is that too dark? I'm feeling like you could probably see better if I keep that off. I'm going to keep that off. Now here it is on paper in color. Here it is on vellum in the sepia. Okay, this is paper and this is the faux vellum tracing paper. Okay, so um, now comes the time. I do see a little bit here that I tore. So I'm going to just take a thin sliver of that off as well. Oh, I really need to hurry or else this video is going to go on forever. Here we go. And we have our vellum. So now I want to decide how I want to make my pocket, which is like this. Okay. Similar to this. I mean, you could make it any way you wanted, but this is how I want to make mine. But I really want to get this in here and this writing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this 
here. But I'm just gonna pinch it just in the middle just to make sure that I get what I want in my front of my pocket. It doesn't matter where your seam is because like you can see on this one, you can barely see your seam. This one you can see because I had it a long time ago on um, glued into one of my um, my 2020 um, journal, inspirational journal, and I tore it out because I was going to use it in another project, which I still am. So I am going to go ahead and make this the front of my pocket because I really like that. I hope you can see it. I'm going to shut off another light. I think the daylight's plenty. I do, yeah. I'm going to do that. Okay, so here we go. I like that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just make sure I'm folding this evenly, matching the edges, and then just press it down with your finger is fine. Right, that looks a little off to me. There we go. And then you can just brush it if you'd like. These have a um, nice edge on it, so I do have a, many bone folders, but that one happened to just be right there, so that's why it's that. So there we go. And to make that my front of my pocket, I am going to just fold this over. Match up my edges. And pinch that middle just to make sure that I'm even and I'll pinch there. I'll come up here, make sure I'm even. The thing with tracing paper, or even vellum, I think sometimes, is once you fold it, your fold is there. So I do kind of a pinching thing, and then I'll burnish it. If need be. But typically, your finger works fine. Now, oftentimes, I will sew this. I'm not going to sew today just because there's not a lot of time and my sewing machine is over there. <laughs> so, and I don't have a camera set up over there. Maybe someday. Just getting used to videoing. And I sure am glad. I am so thrilled with my subscribers and hope. My hope is to reach 500 this year. I mean, if God willing, I'll reach 1,000, but 500's fine. And there we go so far okay so that's all we did I just folded some a piece of tracing paper that's been printed on that's the back so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some glue and we're going to glue along here I find in my experience the best glue to use for tracing paper is three in one or Fabri-Tac. A thin line will do it. And just press that down. And
and you still have a nice big, you know, space to space. Oops, I guess I didn't leave that down long enough. But it's fold space to space because you're gluing it so that your fold is on the inside. So you don't have glue or anything compromising anything you want to put in or out of your pocket. Okay? So you still have this full size side to side um, pocket. And you could use any piece or any kit or anything to do this. You can even take a book page if you wanted to. Put it on your copy machine, your printer, and copy it onto the vellum. So say you have a really pretty book page and you wanted to put it on vellum or tracing paper. I don't use vellum particularly because I find that it smudges. It doesn't, you know, tracing paper dries pretty much right away and the vellum does not. Besides, the vellum is getting expensive, just like everything else, and the tracing paper seems to be staying at the same price. Although I have so much of it, I haven't had to order it, so it may be more expensive than when I purchased it. But, and there's no special way you can get as, you know, I find the cheaper the tracing paper, the better it prints. So, don't spend a lot of money. There you go. Now, for my bottom... Probably what I will do, now typically I will fold it, but I'm not going to fold this one. I am just going to put, I'm going to open this up here, and I'm just going to put a small tap, a very small line, that's why I use sugar bottles, because I can get a nice thin line across the bottom there so that nothing falls out of my pocket but I still have a lot of real estate in there What to do for the pockets? I haven't decided. So, I keep looking at that color page and I want to use it so badly, but I'm not going to. Because like I said, we're going to try and do sepia for this. And I think I will do I think I'll for my for these pockets here because I want them sturdy I'm not going to do I mean I could I've done it many 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 times I've done the vellum so I've cut this shorter and I've used my extra vellum for the pocket but I don't want to do that. This is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight inches tall, one, two, three, four, five inches wide, eight inches. That's gonna be okay for my journal, I believe. Yeah. So, I'm going to keep it at 8 inches. I'm not going to make... I was just thinking maybe I will take and make this my pocket. Um, I think I will. I'll shorten this and make this my pocket. Thank you for sticking with me and my decisions. <laughs> I'm going to make a little notch here first. So just open it up. I 
follet. And just take your round inch, this is 1.5. I'm trying to get it in the middle. Oh, sorry, it's vellum. I need a piece of paper. Hold on. Anytime you're working with tracing paper, always put paper where you're going to punch it so that it will punch through. Otherwise, it's just going to bend it. So that's just another tip. Okay. So I'll put that there. I'll put this here. Try and get my middle. And I hope I'm in frame. And it will cut for you with no problem. And then just take your paper out. There's your little divot here. And you can ink this as well. I don't do a lot of inking, so I'm not going to ink that. Okay. So, if I'm going to make this a pocket, I'm going to need to get my... Fiskish cutter, and I am just going to cut, let's see, I have two pockets on this one. Let me see how far up I need to cut this to give two pockets. I think I'll just do one, well, I might be able to do two. Hold on. So I'm going to cut this. By, I'm going to cut an inch. Is that an inch? Pretty sure. Or is it two? Nope. It's, it's two inches. So I could just cut two inches off the bottom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this back up. Remember, I glued it. And I'm just going to get my scissors. And I am going to make two pockets out of this one inch. So I'm just going to take my piece of tracing paper. I'm going to cut this edge. And I'm going to cut this edge. And now I've got two pieces of alum, which I'm going to put one here, and I'm going to put one here. Before I do that, I think I'll put a divot here. So again, take your piece of paper. This writing seems to be going up. So sometimes you want to check your writing. If there's writing on your collage or whatever, just to make sure it's going in the right direction. And I made a divot there. That will go on the bottom. This one, I'll leave by itself, and I'll put a divot on. What I'll do is glue these two edges, just a small line. Very thin line, so I can get a lot of real estate in there. going to place this about there. 
the bottom one's easy. But remember, we cut this, so let's re glue this. Nothing like thinking off the top of my head. But that's okay. This is how we learn together. Did I already? No, I only did two edges. We want to do the bottom edge of this one too. I won't be editing this. I'm just learning how to edit first of all and second of all I want you to see my little mistakes here and there that I make or how I fix things. There we go. Now this one, we want to go ahead and do that U shape along the edge. Very thin line. Don't squeeze your bottle too hard. And again, this is Fabri-Tac by Beacon. And we're going to glue that here. There we go. So we have our top pocket, which isn't fully glued yet. It's not dry. So we're just gonna leave this aside and let this dry. And for now, I think I'll just put a few clips on there so that it stays while it dries. That's going right along the edge there, so that will be nice. This one's already dry. And I'll just put this aside for now while I show you what I'm thinking in my head for my tag. And that is, if you've ever had a collaged page and you don't really know what to do with it, I have an idea to use this whole page for an envelope or on its own. So what I'm going to do is decide how wide I need my tag or how wide I can make my tag. So here's my pocket. I definitely want these birds in my tag. I'd actually love that flower as well. So I think I'll move it down just a little bit. And let's see, and over. And that will be my journaling tag for the middle. So I'll just take my pencil Make sure that's where I want my tag to be. I think I'm gonna move it over just a little bit because I really do like that writing as well. So I'm going to take that as well. I'm going to get my pencil, which I usually keep right in front of me. And I'm going to mark it so that I can cut it here. I'm going to get my cutter. I'm going to cut on the inside of my mark I just made. 
Well, maybe not because then I won't get that whole flower. So let me see how much of that flower I can get in there. And then I'll trim off from this side if I have to. Let's see if this fits. No, so I'm gonna take a little bit off from this side. Not too much, just a breath. I don't wanna take his tail off. And I don't wanna get rid of that whole entire flower and I wanna keep the writing. So I think I'll take a little here. It's just a smither. I'll take a little in the, on this side as well. And that way I'll have what I'm looking for, which is this. Okay. Check my pocket again and see if it's going to fit. And voila, it's going to fit fine. Of course, it's going to be too tall, so I will have to take my pencil and decide where I want to cut off, which is no problem. I am going to cut it here. I'll just get my pencil and make a mark. Take my board, my score, my um, and there I have a really pretty um journaling card. Now, for the sake of time, I'm not going to back and sew this right now, but I will, and I will leave pictures of it in the in the group, in the Facebook group, Blind Out Arrow. But the tag the journaling card will slide in here. And that's exactly how I wanted it. I do want it to stick out a little bit like that. Okay, and it's nice because you can see, I don't know if you can see through it or not, but that's so far how it's come out. So now I want to make a, let's see, I think I'll make, um, so I have a bookmark, I mean I have a journal card, so I think I'll make a tag now. Um, so I'll need this. And I want to make my tag out of this. So there you go, and it is one, two, three, four, five, six inches by one, two, three. All I'm gonna do is back it obviously before I sew it, but I just take it and I bend it. I don't fold it, I just bend it. I take my scissors. I decide where I want my place to be. And there you have a beautiful um, tag. And that is going to go in this pocket. Now I guess it's going to fit in this pocket. Right. Okay. So now we still have this to work with. I am not going to get rid of that. And we also have this piece. So let's see, what can we do with this? We can do a lot of things with this. Let's see the size of it first. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's six by six, so I could make an envelope. And I think I will. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna find my middle, which 
I am not going to pinch the whole thing. I'm just going to fold it in half, make sure my sides meet end to end. Just going to make a little pinch here, and that will be my middle. Whoops. Okay, and all I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold here to my middle. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to fold here to my middle. Now you could make anything out of this. My first thought was a little booklet, but I have, a, I have another idea while we were, while I was trying to decide. And then you want to bring this up above your point there where you made your little X. Okay. And then this will or should come down nicely. like this and it's not meeting so I'm gonna have to come down a little bit further but that's okay because when we're done with our folds we're going to open it up well before I do before I open it up I just want to make sure that it's square and it is perfectly square okay and that's going to be the outside front part of my envelope okay you could also make it like this if you wanted to depending how hot on how you want it will be you know how you fold it when you've cut all your pieces so what I want to do now is I want to go in and take out that bulk from my envelope. So I'm just going to crease it, garnish these little lines so I can see where I need to trim it. And open it back up. I'm gonna go into my corners And I am going to snip my little triangles here. So there's one. Just making sure I'm in frame. This one. Turn it. There's two. Turn it. This three. Turn it. And four. Okay. And then you just refold. Like this. And there's your envelope, or my envelope anyway. So you could pretty much have it any way you wanted. I like it like this, so that's how I'm going to do mine. Now, I line my envelopes, so I'm not going to close this up yet. Just gonna erase that because I think I might have pinched my finger but it erased right off also anytime you get glue fabric to act or any kind of glue on your paper that you don't want there if you just rub it with a white eraser the glue will come right off 
same thing on your vellum if you happen to get you know an edge where you don't want you know where your glue seep through it just take your white eraser or you know I have one of these white erasers I also have a gum eraser that I use and if you do this it takes the glue right off okay so I'm not going to glue this up yet because I'm going to line it when I'm done but I do have one more thing that I want to do to this that I would like to show you and this is called spackle it's a fast dry spackle non shrinking spackle I have placed it in just a jar I found these at um, Tuesday mornings a while ago and I've been using them for everything I put my PVA in here with water to use for decoupage um, what have you so what I've done is I've taken some of the fast dry you don't have to use fast dry you can use any kind of spackle um, and this is for drywall repairs. If you purchase one of these for $5 at your local hardware store, it will last you the rest of your life and mine. I also have modeling paste. It works very well and it's really nice. And this is by Master's Touch. And it's really nice. It's pretty. It's got a white color to it. It's also $19 on sale. That will last me I don't know how long. So what I've done is I've taken my spackle. I've put some of it in a jar. And I added just a little bit of white gesso. You can add white paint too. Because as you can see, it's a tiny bit not much, but it's a tiny, tiny bit gray. I actually love the color, but for today, I added a little bit of white to a jar, and that's the color I'm going to use on this. And then I've got a beautiful um, stencil on order. However, it hasn't come yet, and I didn't want to wait. So I've pulled another stencil. Now if I can just grab that. Here it is. I've pulled another stencil. And I am going to stencil using my gesso. Um, I was going to do a flower, but now I'm thinking how nice it would be to match the bird so I think I'll do that okay so all you do is I take my little uh, mask brush you can get these at Dollar Tree if you're in the US or you can get a set on Amazon um, anywhere but they're um, just like a spatula and they're silicone and I use them for everything because they wipe right off and I don't have to go to the kitchen. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my spackle. It's already been stirred quite a bit. Um, and it's been in here for quite a while so it doesn't go bad. Nothing happens to it and as long as you keep it sealed it will stay nice and soft and pliable. So you want to take a little bit on your brush now, I like to take some tape because I'm a perfectionist. You don't have to. But I like to take a piece of tape before I do it because I like it to be able to stay where I want it. So I'm going to push this over here. Actually, I'm going to... Well, I want its whole tail in there, so I'm going to do nail glue down here. Oh, that's where I'll put her. 
right in there. I'm going to wrap a little bit so I can get her branch in. And then I'm just going to tape this down with some scotch tape or whatever. You could use um, any kind of tape. Masking tape would be a good idea. Um, washi tape. But I just happen to have that rope right close by and then all you're going to do is take a little bit of spackle i'm going to just rub it right over your stencil where you want it now i think i want more than the bird on my envelope i think i'm going to go ahead and put this branch in as well So you're just going to spread it on just like you would modeling paste. I'm holding this down so that it stays. This is just a stencil I got from, I don't know where I've had it forever. Probably the Dollar Tree. Or it could have been a, one of my craft stores, Joann's or Michael's. Or, I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't recent, I know that, because we don't, in our village, we don't have any of those stores. I definitely want to get some of these leaves in here as well. I hope it doesn't end up being too much, but we'll see. can always print and make something else. That's the beauty of digitals. You can do this on book page. You could do it on tags. You can spackle on fabric as long as you're not going to wash it. And it really doesn't take long to dry. I'm not going to be able to get that whole branch in, but that's okay. That's all okay. It's all good. Just want to make sure I get his head in there good. Or her head. Spring has sprung. Of course, I live in Florida, so... Although we do have... A bird's nest. We have actually a couple of bird's nests and they are starting to I bet soon they will be coming out of their eggs which will be fun. And once you've got your spackle or you could use modeling paste by all means. It works just as well. But if you want to go a less expensive route, I highly suggest spackle. Just make sure your cover is on tight. And then just put it up because if you put it in a jar and add some gesso to it or some white acrylic paint to make it less of a gray color, which I never do, um, I typically go for this. And it's in another jar up there on my on my shelf. I just brought this out so I could show y'all, but and this is kind of hard to get back on and off, so I like to keep it closed. This is simple because it just you know winds off. And then all I do is I am out of paper towel, but I will just take this paper towel on my little face mask spatula 
that I use for paints and inks and glues and you name it. And it came off. So it keeps me from having to run into the kitchen or to bring any water that might spill in my craft room. Oh, we should probably lift this off and see our results, right? Right, it dries very fast. And there you go. And I really like that. So I'm going to keep it. It actually looks like a little eye there, but it's the corner of the leaf. I don't know if you can see that. And what I will do is I will line my envelope with something, tea dye paper or something, and I will sew it and then I'll glue it together. On this one, I'll line the back of it as well. I'll sew around it. I'll put something for the top. Again here is our tag. I mean our journal card, and again, I'll back that, I'll sew around it, and that will be a journal card. And then once it's all together, we'll have, I might even put a little letter inside here, I'm not sure. I may just put, let me just make sure this is dry. I'm gonna wait a little bit. It feels dry, but I'll show you what it will look like when it's all done. There you go. And from that one collage, this is what we have left. So I think I'll make something out of this as well. I'm not sure what yet. But definitely something that will um, fit in one of these pockets. And we will have used the entire collage. If you happen to get some spackle where you don't want it, which I don't want it there, just take your eraser before it, too, before it gets too dry. And it will come right off. It's like a powder. Once this dries completely, this won't come off at all. You don't need to put a spray fixative on it or anything. Now, another thing I might do is I might take some uh, watercolor and I may watercolor the leaves. I'm not sure. I like it just the way it is right now, so I'll likely leave it that way. But if you hop over to the Facebook group at line.arrow, if you're not already um, a part of the group, I highly recommend it. It is a fabulous group. Um, lots and lots of inspiration. Also, before I go, I want to mention again the um, Rach and Bella collaboration that is currently going on. So far, we have had Tracy Fox. We have had Natalie from Line.Arrow. And today we had Sunshine and Doors, I guess think her name is. I know if you go on Rach and Bella's YouTube channel, you will see all of the people in the collaboration. In my next video, I will have the collaboration printed out and I will um, show you that so that you can take a screenshot. In the meantime, I highly recommend that you take a look. Um, Miss Angelita Bella, from Rach and Bella. She did one yesterday. Fabulous. I'm not going to tell you about it. I want you to go and look. 
and Natalie's was great. Of course, Tracy Fox, fabulous. They have a great lineup. So I highly suggest that you follow along that collaboration. And I will be back hopefully tomorrow with another part of our spring writings and sepia. And I will leave the information below so that you can find it easily on Natalie's Line Dot Arrow at Etsy shop. For now, I hope that you all are well. I hope you stay well. Be blessed. And have a fantastic afternoon. Bye-bye now.